welcome back, folks. Uh, thank you for joining me on the Writer's Block on Virtual Channel Network. I'm David Mulligan, and we are going to continue reviewing Terminator 2 Judgment Day, written by James Cameron and William Wisher. Let's take a look. Scene 38. Um, Sarah is trying to convince Silverman to have visitors and be moved to a minimum security prison. And I really like uh, what he wrote here. Sarah's, uh, uh, let me read Silverman. Silverman says, I'm afraid not. Not for a while. I don't see any choice but to recommend to the review board that you stay here another six months. And James Cameron writes, Sarah's eyes turn cold and lethal in one second. She knows he's lo she's lost. She knows this guy is just playing with her. And she, dash, dash, leaps across the table at him. Isn't that kind of nice how he does the reveal, how he suddenly throws something in? He could have made it its own paragraph. He could have done it many different ways. But in this case, we're literally in the mind, in her mind, even though sort of we're breaking the fourth wall, but it works very well in this case. She knows this guy is just playing with her, and she leaps across the table. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. I, I would like to try to do something like that as well. Within reason, you know, obviously. You want to be you don't want to go overboard, and James Cameron doesn't go overboard. He's very selective on how he does that, which is good. Let's go to um, 44. This is where John uh, for the first time meets his uh, his protector, Terminator. And uh, John looks back at Terminator. He is starting into the he is staring into the black muzzle of a 10-gauge now, aimed right at his head, he realized he's screwed. Then something crazy happens, which is kind of neat. Something crazy happens. He actually just tells the reader that something crazy happens. Terminator says, get down. Get down. <laughs> Great line. Uh, and then, of course, we see now we, we understand, the audience understands that this Terminator is sent to protect him, which is kind of cool. Uh, let's move on. 44B. Okay, so with 44B, now we're getting an idea that this, we're getting more information about this new Terminator. Uh, and I like the way that he does this. Now, let's back up for a second and talk about something. When we first meet this new Terminator, he's naked and we don't know anything about him. And when he kills the officer uh, that's there, uh, he just kind of punches him in the gut, but we have no idea. Uh, what actually happened. We just know he punched him and the guy goes down like a, a ton of bricks. Uh, but here, now we're starting to see what this Terminator can do, how different this Terminator is from what we know from the first movie. Uh, he writes, uh, we realize now that the cop is a Terminator 2. We don't know the details yet, but let's just call him T-1000, since that's what he is. A newer model than the one we've come to know so well the 800 series Arnold, which is kind of cool. He goes, Arnold. Uh, this guy's a prototype, and he's got quite a few surprises. You know, that, just to a reader, I mean, look, I'm a big fan of Terminator and stuff like that, but let's say I wasn't. Let's say uh, this was just a brand new movie, and it didn't have a, uh, a prequel to it. Uh, this kind of writing really catches me. I really like this. I really like that he says, well, uh, you know, we don't know the details yet. Let's just call him T-1000 because that's what he is. Uh, and he says he's got a, quite a few surprises. It's good writing. Uh, it catches my attention and I want to know more. Well, he has surprises. Well, surprise me. Let's see what you got. And he does, obviously, uh, which is great. Uh, if we go down to 44E, go a little bit farther, uh, we see uh, the Terminator gets the crap beaten out of him. Uh, just like in the first movie, he goes through a window and he's on his back and he gets up. And there's a little interesting line here where uh, James Cameron puts us sort of in the mindset of the Terminator when he says, um, he sits up and looks around, gets his bearings, rise smoothly to his feet. All servos seem to be working fine. I don't know how you show that. I don't know if Arnold Schwarzenegger had that in his head when he got up or whatever. But I like that here. And the reason that I like that here is because it's another way of illustrating to the audience the difference between these two Terminators. The other Terminator doesn't have servos. He's completely different. 
Uh, if you if you go down a little bit more down the page, you'll see in 45, he throws in another little line that gets into the mind of, in this case, Sarah. Uh, John looks, uh, I'm sorry, John, uh, not Sarah, in the mind of John. John looks back, dot, dot, dot. The T-1000 is behind him, running. He twists the throttle and guns a, the little bike forward. Incredibly, the T-1000 is gaining. This nightmare isn't happening. John races up the exit ramp and charges right into the street. This nightmare isn't happening. Now, do we need that there? Do you absolutely need that there? No. Do I like it? Yeah, I like it. Would I do it? I don't know. You have to decide for yourself. But, you know, this is bold writing, and, and uh, I think it communicates what uh, James Cameron intended to the reader. So, yeah, it should be this nightmare isn't happening. You know? Good stuff. It's good stuff. Moving on. Well, folks, that's it for today. Uh, please join me next time when we continue to take a look at Terminator 2 Judgment Day by James Cameron and William Bishop. We'll see you then.